Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing the best Chanel makeup launches of 2021. I do also have a very short list of disappointments, but I went through all of my Chanel purchases this year and I pulled out best of the best. I'm not gonna present these in order in which they launched, but instead by category. So starting with lipsticks, this is one of my favorite launches from Chanel in 2021 the Rouge Coco Bloom Lipstick. And I have been on a low buy for the longest time, but I'm so happy I picked up some of these lipsticks. It's what's on my lips today because this is one of my favorite lipstick formulas from Chanel. Of course, I love the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue. The Longwear Liquid Lipstick will always be my hands down favorite. But in terms of the tube lipsticks, the bullet lipsticks, this is it. They feel so buttery on the lips. They're incredibly hydrating, incredibly pigmented, and they look beautiful. They have some sort of blurring magic in that you apply them to the lips and you no longer really see the cracks or dryness. I have pretty dry lips, so whenever I apply these, I always love the way they look so smooth afterwards. The shade that I'm wearing right now is I think 116 Dream. I might have applied a couple of these. So I picked up 110 Chance, 116 Dream, and 124 Merveille. But I would absolutely pick up more of these in the future. I think this is better than the Rouge Allure. It's better than the Rouge Coco. I prefer these to the Rouge Coco Flash. Rouge Coco Bloom is where it's at. I didn't know we needed these from Chanel until they launched this formula. I know we all have different preferences, but if you like something that's really hydrating, really comfortable, but gives a lot of color impact, I think you will love this line. Hopefully they, I know they're gonna keep it around for a while. It's not limited edition. I think maybe a handful of the shades were for the initial launch. But they need to expand the shade range. That's my only complaint. I could say that about all of the Chanel lipsticks because I just want my favorite formulas to be available in every shade possible. These are amazing. I know the Rouge Allure Lac formula launched in 2020. I wasn't sure if I picked up this color in 2020 or in 2021, but this is the Rouge Allure Lac in 62 still. This is such a beautiful shade. It's the perfect everyday nude. So as soon as I finish my intense caramel, this is going to be thrown in the purse and I'll just use it every single day. I love the Rouge Allure Lac formula as well. It's kind of the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue without the need to apply the gloss on top. It doesn't dry down to a really heavy, drying liquid lipstick. Kind of stays a little bit hydrating. There's a teeny tiny bit of slip. It's really comfortable and very long wearing. I'm not a huge fan of liquid lipsticks. I think this is on the short list of two and they're both from Chanel. And then my last favorite lipstick launch of 2021 from Chanel is from the Holiday Collection. This is 176 Independent, but any of these number five lipsticks I think are so special. Of course, they're special because they're limited edition. It's the Holiday Collection. It's the 100th anniversary of Chanel number five. So of course they have the beautiful number five etched there right on the bottom. So I would consider this to be a collector's piece. They came out with so many beautiful reds for the holidays like Pirate, of course 176. They had a couple berry colors. So the shades they came out with were so perfect for the holiday season. I think if you love Chanel, you should definitely pick one of these up while you still can. Moving on now to complexion products, Chanel launched two gorgeous highlighters early in the year. The first is the Fleur de Printemps Blush and Highlighter Duo. This was part of that almost botched spring collection because they re-promoted the Warm Memories eyeshadow palette. We did not receive the two eyeshadow palettes that the rest of Europe received and there was a lot of confusion. But this was always going to be the star of the show. This blush highlighter duo is incredible. And it's very rare when Chanel launches a duo like this that I love both sides. Usually one side will be perfect, the other side is so-so. I think that's probably true for most face palettes. But I love this blush and I love this highlighter. The two of them together are perfection. This shade of blush is kind of the perfect warm peachy pink. It's really perfect for spring. And then the highlighter has a beautiful pink undertone. Much more pink than we've seen from any other highlighter from Chanel. So I think this is really fun. And of course it came with a beautiful design embossed on top, which you can barely see. But it had camellias on there. Really pretty design, but I just love the product. It's such a special piece. This is definitely one of my favorite things that Chanel launched in 2021. One of the prettiest pieces in my collection now. And then not long after Fleur de Printemps, they also launched the Pearl de Lumiere Illuminating Blush Powder. This is also 
stunning. And I remember comparing all of my highlighters because I thought this looks very similar to Ivory Gold or some of the other Chanel highlighters, but they managed to make it different enough that of course I could then justify the purchase. This also had a beautiful kind of sundial design embossed on the powder, but it's a beautiful shade. It gives off almost an antique rose gold. They called it an illuminating blush powder. I remember hearing from a lot of people that said that they had very fair skin and this would work as a blush for them. It is definitely not a blush on me, maybe a blush topper, but this is more of a highlight, but I think it's such a pretty tone. It looks beautiful on the skin. They did a really nice job with this piece. After years of waiting and begging Chanel for a shade extension of Soli Tan de Chanel, we finally have another shade of the Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. This is shade 395 Soli Tan Deep Bronze. This is very different than the original 390. So much darker. Hopefully this means we will see even more shades in the future because they could easily do a shade in between the two that exist. They could do a lighter shade. They could do several deeper shades, but it's a start. And even I can make this work for my skin tone, which I think is actually a bad sign. Definitely needs to be darker. If I can make it work, they didn't go quite dark enough, but even the original is not really that tan on me. You can barely see it. So I needed something a little bit darker. I think it's a beautiful formula. I think you have to use it up pretty quickly. It's not something you just wanna purchase and then let sit in the drawer because it does have the coconut oil in the base, but this has never given me any sort of irritation or issue with my skin. So I'm still a big fan of the cream bronzer from Chanel and I like both. I could mix them if I wanted to be high maintenance, but who really wants to pull out two cream bronzers? just to do their makeup. So I've actually been grabbing this one more so than the original. Now these two products aren't technically new launches for 2021, but they did tweak the formula this year and I really love them. Of course, I've always really loved these. This is the Ultra La Tint Ultra Wear All Day Comfort Flawless Finish Foundation. It is quite a mouthful. I always use shade B30 in all of my Chanel foundations. I love this foundation. It's beautiful. It's perfect for special occasions, really glam makeup, photos, brides, those occasions where you're gonna be taking a lot of pictures, you might be dancing at an event. It has medium to full coverage, a natural matte finish. It's not too matte, it's not drying, it definitely doesn't look cakey, although it is a thicker cream consistency. It's not going to give you any glow, but it's just a beautiful long wear foundation. I think this would rival an Estee Lauder Double Wear, a Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Filter. If those are some of your favorites, this would be the, the Chanel option for you. And I think whatever they did to tweak the formula was supposed to make it a little bit cleaner. I think they also expanded the shade range, which is amazing because then even more people can wear it. It's beautiful. And then I also really like the concealer. This is the Corrector de Chanel. I picked up B10 and I should have gone with the lighter shade. I didn't realize at the time that they expanded the shade range. They added a lot of darker shades, but they also did one lighter than B10. I think it's 010. So that will be what I pick up the next time I need to replace this. The Chanel Corrector is one of my favorite concealers. It just has the perfect texture, the perfect consistency. Again, they tweaked the formula, nothing noticeable. I've been using this concealer for the longest time and I don't notice a difference. It's kind of medium coverage. So if you're looking for something that's very thick or full, full coverage, this probably won't be for you. And it has kind of a natural finish. I wouldn't say it's matte and I wouldn't say it's really creamy hydrating either, but it's kind of right there in the middle. So if you don't want to set it, you don't have to, but it's also not going to be a creasy mess on you. So it's kind of perfect middle of the road finish, middle of the road coverage, kind of checks all of the boxes. Now, if you love really luminous skin, then this product from the Holiday Collection this year would be perfect for you. This is the new Iridescent Illuminating Fluid. They call it the Fluid and Lumineur, which is a little bit different from the Le Beige Illuminating Fluid. I'm not sure why they tweaked the name, but it's basically the same concept, and this is the shade Or Ivoire. So it has this beautiful gold sheen to it. I don't wanna say shimmer, because it's not shimmer. It's very soft and subtle, but it does look beautiful. So I like to mix this into my foundation or sometimes I'll just do a pump underneath my foundation just to give the skin a little extra glow. I think this is the perfect combination. That way you get the long wear, you get the coverage, 
This is going to sheer it out a little bit, but then you get the glow from this. It's not oily or greasy. It's more of a shimmery gel that gives you just a really soft, subtle glow. Looks beautiful on the skin. I think no other brand does a liquid illuminator better than Chanel. I just love these, all of them, every single shade. And I was so excited to see that they came out with a gold version. How cool. Perfect for the holidays as well. Another great use for it, just because I know some people might be attending holiday parties over the weekend, Take a pump of this and just blend it all over your neck, chest, your arms, the decollete. You can rub it even on your arms if they're going to be exposed. You will love the way this looks on your skin. It will just give the slightest beam, like your shoulders will just beam, your clavicles will just beam. You'll just get little light reflections and it looks like your skin is naturally glowing, just perfected. It's one of my favorite tricks, especially for a fancy night out. I almost forgot before we move on to eyes, I also really loved this blush so much more than I thought I was going to. I didn't think I was going to be impressed by this at all. This is the 608 Ombre and it completely sold out, which is pretty rare even for the seasonal limited edition collections. I know they're limited. I don't think this is available, unfortunately. This is what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. It's the perfect neutral matte blush. Adds just a little hint of something to the cheeks it's not overly bronze, it does have a slight pink hue to it. So the color is a little bit funny. I didn't think this was going to be that flattering and this is one of my favorite pieces actually from the fall makeup collection this year. I really like a neutral blush paired with a bold red lip. If you're gonna do something fun, sparkly on the eye and you wanna do a bold red lip, maybe for a holiday party, I think a neutral blush is perfect because that way it doesn't detract, it doesn't compete. It looks a little bit softer. You still have some color to your face, but the, the lip is still what is emphasized. Moving on now to eyes, I have a couple eyeshadow palettes here to mention. The first is 378 Dussor A Serenity. This was part of the eye campaign. I believe it launched right after the summer, kind of late summer, early fall. I'm not really a huge purple fan. I don't know if it's because I'm I just very rarely use it, so it still feels kind of intimidating. So I didn't think I was going to like this palette very much. I thought about not picking it up at all, but I'm so glad I did pick it up because I've created some really fun, flattering eye makeup looks with this palette. It's purple, but it's not really a bright, vibrant, jewel-toned palette. These purples are still very wearable. So it's kind of bringing me out of my shell a little bit. I still need to play with it more than I have, but I'm very happy with it and I'm glad I have it on hand because now I feel like if I do want to experiment with purple, I have the perfect palette to do so. The second palette that launched with that same eye campaign, they launched the palettes as well as they extended the shade range and the eyeliners, is this one, which is more neutral. It's 382 Lumiere A Vibrations. This is right up my alley. I could use this every single day. It would be very boring, but I could use this every single day because it's neutral, wearable, earth tones. You have this really pretty pop of gold, which is kind of a yellowy gold, but even if you wanted to stay over here in this kind of sandy beige, I just think this is kind of the perfect, complete palette. You have the lid shade. You could use this in the crease. You can use this as an eyeliner or depth. So you can kind of take this from day to night. It's a very versatile eyeshadow palette. I'm just more comfortable with these colors. And then I have really come to love and appreciate these Le Beige eyeshadow quints. You get five eyeshadows in these palettes. I believe they retail for $65, so just a few dollars more than the quads. And I temporarily misplaced Tender. I also really like Tender, which was more of a mauve kind of purple berry tone beautiful shades, and this is intense. I think this launched a couple years ago and they brought it back this year, but these are really pretty colors. They're basically all golds, browns, coppers, earthy tones. Probably could have chosen one or the other, this or the eyeshadow quad, but I just really like this formula. They're different. It's a little bit drier, but they're not so dusty. They don't blend out to nothing like they used to. I think these get really decent pigment. And again, you can just create so many flattering looks. This is such a great palette for travel, um, kind of the everyday eyeshadow. So I really like this. One of my all-time favorite products from Chanel is the waterproof eyeliner. This is the Stilo Yo Waterproof Long Lasting Eyeliner. This is the shade Or Antique, number 48. 
I think I picked up a couple new shades. I know I picked up a rose gold. It's in the drawer somewhere. I love them all. All of these eyeliner shades are beautiful. Now, I use these in the waterline. I typically do a liquid outside, so I'm not sure how they perform outside the eye. I know some shades tend to be smoother than others. Any of the eyeliners that are metallic or they have shimmer to them are a little bit trickier outside the eye. These are better used in the waterline. But if it's just a completely matte shade, those, for whatever reason, they go on more like a gel eyeliner. I think I have Black Wood is a good example. It glides on so smooth, so you won't get that tugging or irritation if you're trying to do your top eyeliner. But I love these. They're amazing. I love the expanded shade range. And then my very last favorite on the Best of Chanel 2021 list is this liquid eyeliner that came out with the Holiday Collection. This is the Ombre Premier Lac 27 or Ombre, Ambre. It is so pretty. I have this on my eyes today. I'm going to scoot in closer so you can see what I did. I layered this on the lid and then I packed the gold glitter from this eyeshadow quad right on top and it just looks stunning. I think it is the most beautiful combination. These two together can create some really incredible looks. But I love this. I also really like the black. But the black is not something that I'm going to get a ton of use out of because I just don't really rock a smoky eye that often. This is something that I think would be more appropriate even for a glam lunch. Yes, it has a lot of shimmer and sparkle to it, but it's not too much glitter. I like these liquid shadows that they came out with for the holiday collection so much more than the liquid shadows that they came out with for the fall collection. That completes my list of Chanel favorites from 2021, but I do have a very short list here of product regrets. I wouldn't say fails. In fact, none of these things are awful. They're not terrible, but they're just not great. I haven't gotten a lot of use out of them, and in hindsight, I probably could have skipped them. Now, that is not the case with this first product regret. And it's not really a regret. I purchased two of these eyeshadow quads. This is the number five palette from the holiday collection. I just don't think it is perfect. Now, the more, a little disclaimer here, the more I play around with it, the more I really like it. I think this gold shimmer looks stunning on top of this liquid shadow. This creates a beautiful look, but it's not a complete quad. I always have to use outside eyeshadows in order to create a look. So it's not like this is something that you could pop in a travel bag or get a lot of use out of on a daily basis. I think this little gold shade down here is beautiful. This gold shimmer is stunning. This is okay. This kind of pale snowy shimmer. It's pretty. You can absolutely make it work. The black is mediocre in my opinion. I've definitely used better blacks. I thought the design was gorgeous, the little number five bottles and the number five. I think the color scheme, the color story is very perfect for holiday. It's a very classic holiday color story, so nothing out of the ordinary there, which is fine. But for the 100th anniversary of Chanel number no. five celebration, maybe something a little bit different. Maybe this could have been another nine pan palette, something a little bit larger. I am happy with it. I will absolutely use it, especially this gold during the holidays. And I'm happy I picked up a second palette. That way I can always look back on it as a collector's piece. That one will remain in the drawer in the vanity. The reason this makes this list is because it's not very user-friendly. It's not a complete palette. And I think if you don't really love Chanel, if you don't have any appreciation for the fact that this is the 100th anniversary of Chanel number no. five, which is fine, you don't have to, you're probably not going to love this. You might as well skip it. I kind of felt the same way about this palette from the LeBlanc collection. This is the 374 Allure A Eclat. It's pretty. You can certainly create beautiful looks if you want to. These aren't really my colors and I don't necessarily love the formula of this palette. It's different. These are the pans that are completely flat not the slightly mounted domes that we're used to seeing in the quads. It's okay. Not terrible, but not the best, and I probably could have skipped it. I think if you skipped this palette and you saved your money, you're, you're better off. You didn't miss anything with this palette. A couple of these colors are nice, but I just, I don't even think about it. I don't even remember this palette. Next, I have the Ombre Premier Lac in the shade 35. This is the slightly reddish kind of burgundy liquid eyeshadow. I like it. Huh. That smell kind of threw me for a second. 
I've never noticed a bad smell from these, but just then I got a really bad smell. It's not going bad already. This is just from the fall collection. I like these. They're good. They're not great. You can certainly make them work. I'd like to play around with this a little bit more. I also picked up the bronze shade, which I thought the bronze would be more wearable, more user-friendly, but I didn't really care for that shade either. It was very cool toned, not a lot of warmth to it, and just not as flattering as I would have hoped. So I'm glad I picked them up to experiment and try to make it work. It's a very underwhelming fall collection from Chanel this year, which is sad because usually I really look forward to their fall collection. That's okay. Next year will be better. If you skipped these or if you've been thinking about them, skip them. I believe this was part of the LeBlanc collection as well. It could have been for spring. This is the Bomb Essential in the shade Pearlescent. I don't know why I keep buying these because I don't really use them and I think I finally learned my lesson because they came out with a really pretty gold shade for the holiday collection and I said nope. I picked up three or four of these in the past couple of years and I think it's pretty. It looks pretty on the skin but there's just something about them. Maybe I need to find a new place in the drawer for them. I don't really go to grab them. It's a very soft, subtle highlight. It gives you more of a glass skin glow, which I think works for some occasions, but I have so many powder highlights that I generally will go for a powder or a cream. I don't really love the balm. Then again, whenever I put it on, I always really like it. I'm happy with them the first time I use them when I've just purchased them. It's just the fact that they sit in the drawer and I don't pull them out. It's way too wasteful, so I'm going to stop picking these up. The very last thing on my short regrets list is this lipstick. I think this was from the spring collection as well. 496 Tendrous. It's the Rouge Coco lipstick. It's pretty. It's a pretty, very standard shade of pink. I actually thought about including this in my favorites, but then I thought, you know, it's pretty and I like it, but I didn't use it. So this is something that I probably should have skipped in hindsight. The shade looks very similar to Mademoiselle. They might not be an exact match, but I think it's that same type of everyday pink, very wearable, kind of goes with everything, which is what drew me to the lipstick to begin with. But then sure enough, I just haven't really worn it. It's nice, but now that I have the Rouge Coco Blooms, I'm just not that interested in the Rouge Coco formula because it doesn't really last. The Rouge Coco Bloom feels so much better on the lips. It actually feels like it hugs the lips and it's really nourishing. I don't really get that feeling from the Rouge Coco. So, and that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. If you have any favorite Chanel Beauty purchases or least favorite, let me know down below in the comment section. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.